I think yesterday we read is that love which makes one experience the beloved as being ever fresh and which is itself also fresh at every moment is called anurag. In the stage of anurag, the increase of desire is so strong that the forms and qualities of the beloved appear as ever fresh at every moment. One can measure one's taste by one's thirst. A person who has no thirst will not even enjoy drinking an ocean of nectar. How much desire shows for attaining one single embrace of shimatis. How much desire Krishna shows for attaining one single embrace of Srimatis. Anura causes the lover and beloved to control each other, and therefore Mohan can justly be called the ocean of the essence of Anura Rasa, because he is controlled by Srimatis' love to the utmost. Suddenly the transcendental vision disappears and Sripad, returning to his sadaka level, humbly prays, Sa radhika mai kadapi kripam karotu. Will that radhika ever give me her mercy? This ends verse 11 and now then we start verse 12. When will the auspicious glance of the young goddess of the bower cottage of Rindavan, whose restless eyes are swaying on the waves of the swelling ocean of Rasa, Krishna's limbs fall on me? When will the auspicious glance of the young goddess of the bower cottage of Rindavan? whose restless eyes are swaying on the waves of the swelling ocean of Rasa, Krishna's limbs, fall on me. Or in short, when will the auspicious glance of the young goddess fall on me? Now it's a commentary. Shri Rata, an ocean of emotions, by Srimati's grace, Sripad now sees another transcendental picture. He sees Sri Radha passionately going out to meet Krishna in some bower house at noontime. So then here we can understand that she is now in Manjari Bhav because she is seeing. That is how Gurudev explained it. The, uh, the Manjaris are seeing the scene, what happened. They are watching. This love journey is really astonishing. On one hand, she is eager to meet Krishna. On the other hand, she is afraid. And the cause of her journey is also very difficult. People say that love has a tender taste and has an amazing power. The sun shines on the head and burns the sand on the road, spreading itself in the sky like a burning canopy. Her body is as soft as butter and her feet are as tender as lotus flowers. Hari, Hari, the cause of love cannot be stopped. This amorous girl gives up all considerations, desiring to be touched by Mohan. Srimati conquers all obstacles 
because her desire to serve Mohan is so strong, and so she easily reach the trysting bower. So nice described that her desire to serve Mohan is so strong. So this is also the reason of her passion. Of her passion, when eager Shyam sees Rata's moonlike face in the bower, he becomes most happy. That moon causes waves of beauty to swell on the matchless ocean of sweetness that is Shri Krishna, Shri Mohan. He is the very form of all nectarian spiritual flavors. Shri Mohan is the very form of all nectarian spiritual flavors. The Upanishads say, Raso Vaisa, God is taste. And Anandam Brahma, God is bliss. A devotee can relish Mohan's sweetness according to the amount of love he has for him. And Radha has the greatest love for him. So she can also relish his sweetness to the utmost. Seeing Mohan's sweet, beautiful smile and his playful eyebrows, Trimati is agitated with feelings of love for him. How many sweet plays the glances of Vilasani Mani's eyes manifest. How many sweet plays the glances of Vilasani Mani's eyes manifest. Her eyes are like fishes that swim in the waves of the ocean of Nagara Raja's beauty. How many beautiful pictures can she draw in Mohan's heart with her eyes? How many beautiful pictures can she draw in Mohan's heart with her eyes? Instead of Prema Lola Vilochanaya, Sripad writes Pranaya Lola Vilochanaya. Because when the love becomes very great, the lover considers the beloved's body mind and heart to be non-different from his own body, mind and heart. Such is the def definition of the word pranaya. Today, Nagarimani, this is Rata, the jewel of lady lovers, is very generous. She has given up her usual unsubmissive mood and allowed her gallant to control her. Her eyes are restless out of love. How many amorous boots she shows with that flicklessness, flickleness. With her eyes, she offers an oblation of love to her lover. How beautiful she walks, sits and uses her face and eyes arousing amorous desire in her lover. The maid servant understands that Rata and Mohan's love play is imi imminent. The maid servant understands that Rata and Mohan's love play is imminent. So she goes out of the Kunja. How beautiful is the Yuga Ravilasa. So we can watch this scene. This is the beauty of the, of the maid servant to see this sweet Mohan and this sweet Radhika. The fortunate maid servant can watch it through the latticed windows of the bower house. Small. When the love play is over, the maid servant comes inside the kunja and sees Srimati sitting on the love bed. So we can feel this intimacy between 
the divine couple and the manjari. There is nothing to speak about any uh, any blockage or obstacle between this. They easily they they watching to to know the perfect moment when will that moment come when they can serve. And they will ever always looking for it. Any chance to to serve when there is a need. When the love play is over, the maid servant comes inside the kunja and sees Srimati sitting on the love bed. It is as if streams of sweetness are gushing from her limbs. Nagara is enchanted through Shyam Sundara. The maid servant experienced that Shimati looks like the young presiding goddess of the Kunja. What a sweet, beautiful picture no? today. The sweetness of her limbs illuminates the Kunja. The enchanted Nagara and Satyabli relish the sweetness of Shimati's form. In his Sadaka consciousness, Shripad humbly prays, When will the favorable glance, Punya Trishti, of Sri Rata fall on me? The word Punya can mean beautiful, favorable, or auspicious. When will she redeem me from my wretched condition and take me to her auspicious kingdom of Transcendental Lila. When will this playful goddess, the bower goddess of blissful Vrindavan's fresh bower houses, Mohan's beloved, who is naturally full of compassion, cast a favorable glance at me that is like a wave on the ocean of Rasa, with her loving restless, beautiful eyes. When will I become qualified for her loving service as a maid servant with body, mind, and senses? This is the desire on my mind. Oh, my merciful goddess, please hear my prayer at your beautiful lotus feet. Sri Prabodhananda says, O oh moon of king, Vrishabhanu's dynasty, I have no other shelter but you. So oh, beautiful all. I will again read the whole, if you agree with me, because there was so much sweetness inside, in the verse and in the explanations. Are you with me? When will the auspicious glance of the young goddess of the bower cottage of Vrindavan, whose restless eyes are swaying on the waves of the swelling ocean of Rasa, Mohan's limbs fall on me. Shirata, an ocean of emotions. By Shimati's grace, Shripad now sees another transcendental picture. He sees Sri Rata passionately going out to meet Mohan in some bower house at noontime. This love journey is really astonishing. On one hand, she is eager to meet Krishna. On the other hand, she is afraid. And the cause of her journey is also very difficult. People say that love has a tender taste and has an amazing power. So we can understand that the love personified has an amazing power, more than amazing. The sun shines on the head and burns the sand on the road, spreading itself in the sky like a burning canopy. Her body is as soft as butter and her feet are as tender as lotus flowers. Hari, Hari, the cause of love cannot be stopped. This 
amorous girl gives up all considerations, desiring to be touched by Mohan. Shrimati conquers all obstacles because her desire to serve Mohan is a strong, is so strong. And so she easily reached the trysting bower. When eager Shyam sees Rata's moon-like face in the bower, he becomes most happy. That moon causes waves of beauty to swell on the matchless ocean of sweetness that is Sri Mohan. That moon causes waves of beauty, waves of beauty, to swell on the matchless ocean of sweetness. That is Sri Mohan. Sri Mohan is the very form of all nectarian spiritual flavors. The Upanishads say, Raso Vai Saha, God is taste, and Anandam Brahma, God is bliss. A devotee can relish Krishna's Mohan sweetness according to the amount of love he has for him. And Radha is the greatest love for him. So she can also relish his sweetness to the utmost. Because of this, we are always following Swamini. Because when we speak about Krishna consciousness, he is the personified Krishna consciousness. And if we like to be in that, we have to sw we have to follow her. And so our meditation on the Mahamantra is always focused on her service. How Gurudev explained many times, so beautiful the Mahamantra. There is Swamini is meeting with Mohan. And then in the second part, they are in, in union in Rama. And there is a third person in that Mahamantra. It's not only Rata and Mohan. There is a third person who see that when they meet and they embracing. And this is the mantra. Hari, meet Krishna. Again and again, and Gurudev is explaining so beautiful. And then in the union, and they in Ramayana, they also invite the Manjari to be there. And the Manjari is watching and is looking for a chance for a service. And so in our case, we always meditate the Mahamantra from the view of a Manjari. This is a very important point in that meditation. This is the teaching of our Gurudev. First, you have to know who you really are and who is your Ishtadevi, who is your beloved goddess or god. Who is it? Who are you? And uh, if you get the mercy, you will understand who you are and then the Chanting starts with uh, what is the heart? How you how you call this heart? There was a question, Arinam, you, you maybe you are with a pure heart, right? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, pure heart. So in the material world, our heart is always touched by the matter, by the three gunas. That means darkness. Passion and uh, sattva. What is sattva? It's uh, goodness, maintenance. Yes, goodness. These three gunas are all always controlling our heart also because we are thinking on the level of matter. But on the level of the soul, the heart becomes pure. And so we have to fix our own position, we have to know who we are, and we, we have to know who is our Ishtadev, and then the real chanting starts. This is a call 
and a meditation for the meeting of Rata and Mohan. And the third person is the Manjari who is chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Well, they meet, they see each other. Wow. Krishna, Krishna. And then Hare, Hare. Then Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Together they are. Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare. So, so we can see this, the scene. We can feel them when they meet in the mantra. This is in short, beautiful explanation by, by our Gurudev. A devotee can relish Krishna's sweetness according to the amount of love he has for him. And Radha has the greatest love for him. So she can relish also. She can also relish his sweetness to the utmost. And because we are the manjaris of her, we can relish, we can relish Mohan sweetness, but first we relish Radhika's sweetness. And we serve her. We are her maid servants under all circumstances. This is the mercy of Mahaprabhu. All these pictures we read about are actually her mercy, who is no one else than Radha and Mohan and the Manjari in one person. Seeing Krishna's sweet, beautiful smile and his playful eyebrows Shrimati is agitated with feelings of love for him. How many sweet plays, the glances of Vilasini, the glances of Vilasini Mani's eyes manifest, the glances of Vilasini Mani's eyes manifest. How many sweet plays, her eyes manifest. So in her eyes, she manifests sweet plays. Her eyes are like fishes that swim in the waves of the ocean of Nagara Raja's beauty. How many beautiful pictures can she draw in Krishna's heart with her eyes? So there is uh, no need to speak only with her eyes, she draw these pictures in his heart. When he see her beautiful eyes, he can feel everything. And we as Manjari, we can watch the scene and see what happened with him and with her. This is the beauty of the Manjaris. This picture no one else can see but the Manjari and the Kinkari, smallest servants of our Swamini. They are there. There is no other, not the friends are there or other gopis. No, no. They will never see this. This is really only the Manjari can see and understand and feel and enjoy. They are watching this. They are the viewer, not the doer in that case. Instead of Prema Lola Vilochanaya, Sripad writes Pranaya Lola Vilochanaya. Because when the love becomes very great, the lover considers the beloved's body, mind and heart to be non-different from his own body mind and heart. So that means they become one. This is oneness, anurag. Such is the definition of the word panaya. Today, Nagari Mani, this is Rata, the jewel of lady lovers, is very generous. She has given up her usual unsubmissive mood and allowed her gallant to control her. Her eyes are restless out of love. 
how many amorous moods she shows with that flicklessness. With her eyes, she offers an oblation of love to her lover. With her eyes, how beautiful she walks, sits and uses her face and eyes, arousing amorous desire in her lover. So her whole body is speaking, and this is uh, the language of love. She is the personification of love. So she is able to speak with her whole body, to use this body for that kind of a language. And Mohan understand every, every single word, word of this language. And there is one more person who understands everything, and this is the Manjari. They can see this. And there was one Manjari who is explaining this to us. So we can see we all need the mercy of a Manjari. And we have to take shelter on the lotus feet of a Manjari to get this view. It's the view, really. A unique view of a manjari, and here in the, our case, we understand we only can read this all because one manjari is sharing what she sees in the spiritual world. She is sharing with us this most beautiful pictures when Swamini speaks with her whole body to Mohan. How beautiful she walks, sits, and uses her face and eyes, arousing amorous desire in her lover. The maidservant understands that Rata and Mohan's love play is imminent. There is no, no word spoken though the whole time. This happened on the level of understanding without words. So she goes out of the kunja. For that moment, her job is done. And it's perfect. The divine couple are together. This is the highest. This is also our chanting. In the chanting, we guide the divine couple to be together. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So we guide. We see both. Krishna, Krishna. Hare, Hare. Hare Ram. Hare Ram. Ram, Ram. Hare, Hare. Together. There is nothing more to do. They are together. Our seva was successful. And we are happy. And with every Maha Mantra, again and again, we bring them together ever fresh, and also in the Mahamanta, we are guided by a, ma a manjari. We are never alone, because we chant on the japa. Harinam Prabhu gave japa. Japa is made of tulsi leaf. Tulsi is the embodiment of uh, manjari, tulasi manjari. And she came in the material world in the form of a plant. And uh, the japa, we chant the Mahamantra, is made of that wood, of that plant. So we are always together. And uh, especially our Gurudev is also there. So we are a group of Manjaris watching this when Rata and Mohan comes together in the Mahavand. The maid servant understands that Rata and Krishna, Mohan love, play is in imminent. So she goes out of the Kunja. How beautiful is the Yugala Vilasa. The fortunate maid servant can watch it through the latticed window of the bower house. But this is a different, this is not to look inside the, the kunja with any lusty desires. The, this is not uh, um, even the whole body of a manjari is 
is not uh, usual for uh, lusty desires. All senses, the whole body is made for service. The mind is only thinking on the service level. And the joy a manjari can relish is always the service mood, seva rasa. This is the sweet juice one relish from his service. This is the manjari. They will, even not in dreams or under any circumstances, thinking about to enjoy with Moha. This has never happened in the Manjari's mind and senses. They are 100% loyal to Swamini. And Swamini's happiness is their happiness. But they feel everything. They are so fortunate. When the love play is over, the maid servant comes inside the Kunja. Still, there is no word. There was no call. Nothing. There is a relationship and a feeling that the mo moment is there for some seva. And then she sees Swamini sitting on the love bed. It is as if streams of sweetness are gushing from her limbs. Streams of sweetness. Nagara is enchanted. Through Shyam Sundara, the maid servant experienced that Shimati looks like the young presiding goddess of the Kunja. The sweetness of her limbs illuminates the Kunja. The enchanted Nagara in Satyabal relishes the sweetness of Shimati's form when she sits on that bed, shining. She's illuminating the Kunja with her beautiful body that shines. It's nighttime. It's not daytime. They meet in the night. And so the whole Kunja is shining. In his Sadaka consciousness, this means a bodily consciousness. Tripad Hamli prays, When will the favorable glance Punya Trishti of Shirata fall on me. The word Punya can mean beautiful, favorable or auspicious. When will she redeem me from my fresh condition and take me to her auspicious kingdom of transcendental Leelas? <laughs> it's her mercy we are waiting for. <laughs> when will this playful goddess the bower goddess of blissful Vrindavan's fresh bower houses, Mohan's beloved, who is naturally full of compassion, cast a favorable glance at me that is like a wave on the ocean of Rasa, with her loving, restless, beautiful eyes. When will I become qualified for her? When will I become qualified for her loving service as a maid servant with body, mind and senses. Body, mind and senses. There is a deep meaning. I have to give up all other ideas. This is the desire on my mind. Oh, my merciful goddess, please hear my player at your beautiful lotus feet. Sri Prabhupada says, O moon of King Vishabhanu's dynasty, I have no other shelter than you. I gave up everything for you. I only have you as my shelter. You are my goal. The service to your lotus feet are my goal. So, I think we can stop here. Because this sweet picture should stay in our minds today. This beautiful, sweet form of Swamini, how she speaks with her body and her eyes, the language of love to her Mohan, and how much he is enchanted and touched by her love. And we are the viewer of this beauty. So, are there questions to this, what we read today? Maybe you have some questions or 
These new devotees, where are they coming from? You want to answer yourself? We're from Norway. Mm -hmm. From Norway. I've been here before few few times and now I brought my boyfriend. So nice. Wow. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Welcome on the holy land. <laughs> you know our Punyam? Yes. Uh -huh. So he is now also in, in Norway? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's, he's he's studying, she studies. She studies. She's master's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you like Vrindavan? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very yeah, full of good food. It's <laughs> <laughs> usually the experience when you travel away from Norway. <laughs> it's very nice. I, yeah, so nice. That's a special location there in Vrindavan. Huh? Mungamanir is uh, like an island in this... Uh, very traffic uh, uh, Vrindavan nowadays, no? Mm -hmm. yep. So there is a, a place of peace also, no? Mm. Yes. So nice. When you said something about finding a quiet place to chant, I think I'm in the wrong country for that. <laughs> um, I had a friend of mine, he, he is a uh, since the 70s, he is a devotee. And he told me when he came first time to Vrindavan in the end of the 70s, that was a village of 5,000 people. Oh, wow. So it was very peaceful. And there, it was a, a, a beautiful, there was a, really, there was full of trees and, uh, uh, there was this, uh, this, what you see now is, is a, is a big street or whatever that was maybe it was not there or a small path. And, uh, for example, on the Yamuna, there was no building. I have one, uh, big picture. There is one sadhu is walking this Parikam road. You can circumstance this. No, what is it in English? So, okay. You can walk around the whole area. Uh, yes, we, we yeah we say par parikram, mm. and um, so that was um, uh, this was a walk. You you rarely find other people. Maybe you can walk for one two hours without meeting so many. And nowadays you will not find. Uh, away you are alone this is uh many many uh people now came now come to uh Vrindavan because uh it is very popular now in india this holy place became very popular because of the western devotees they start this many pilgrims came and so on this way after 30, 40 years, it became ex extreme popular in India. And so that happened then. And it's rare to find a, a peaceful place nowadays in Vrindavan. Uh, but the Munger Manir is uh, especially, is a very special place. There is a small garden, beautiful temple, and uh, you can stay there and... <coughs> More or less Western standard uh, rooms. <laughs> so, yeah. How long you will stay? Um, almost two more weeks. Two more weeks, so we will meet there. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes, I also come on uh, with uh, <clears throat> Suniti, my wife, and uh, I bring also two friends. They also mm -hmm. come for the first time. Oh, wow. Uh, India, yes, yes. It's a school friend of mine and uh, his wife. They will, uh, but they will stay for three months. They will uh, travel whole India. 
Wow. <laughs> That's very nice. <laughs> so let's see what what will happen in your heart to yeah. to to come to Vrindavan that will change your future. That I can say. It uh even if it's from outside it looks very dirty and whatever, but this location is a place uh where Krishna was five thousand years ago and he touched the God himself, he touched this Vrindavan land. And so his inner potency, his uh pleasure giving potency, this is Radharani, she is always with him. And so she also touched this holy land of Vrindavan. And everyone who touched this land, who came there, his future will change. Mm. So you can uh, you can check what will happen after come Vrindavan. <laughs> mm -hmm. We will check. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's a it's a beautiful thing that happened then. <laughs> So, wish you a very good time, inspiring time in Vrindavan. Thank you. And uh, yeah, see you. See you tomorrow, huh? <laughs> yes. Jai Sri Rade. Jai Sri Rade. to all of you. Dandavad, Dandavad. <laughs> Dandavad, thank you very much. Rade Rade. <laughs> rade, rade. Huh? I'm sorry, I'm uh, running around home things. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> But uh, how is Gurudev? How is Gurudev? Did you hear yeah. something? Yesterday I talked with Gurudev. Ah, yeah, because uh, actually Andakaji is a little sick now. Oh, oh my god! So and uh, Gopinata also. Shachi also, Shampri also, temple devotee worried about him, and we decided to let's call Guru then. But uh, now let's see the situation. We will decide on Monday. So next step, it is sick. And about Guru Dev, um, yeah, it takes time, maybe more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's busy for uh, family issue, especially for Mataji. You know, it's a, a hard <laughs> yeah. time. Though. Hard time now, and uh, Rasarira is always with him. That's so okay. nice. And uh, he's smiling, and uh, always thinking us. We are like the uh, same as a family, genetic yeah. family, spiritual family. From his vision, no difference. So nice. And he's yeah. smiling. And uh, <laughs> yesterday, first of all, his word is Kishori. Do you eat prasada? <laughs> <laughs> This is his word, word first. This is oneness. <laughs> And uh, now Kevara Bhakti is here. Uh, yesterday he went he went back to Japan. She went to back to Japan. Oh. And uh, Gurudev said. Please give prasadam nicely, this prasadam, this prasadam, this prasadam. I all said what he said. <laughs> this is a motherly love. <laughs> She was like, Abu, our absolute truth is Ananta Prasad. So nice. Wow. So, so we hope that uh, Anaka and all the other devotees will become healthy very soon. Yeah. yeah. So also here, uh, many uh, are uh, uh, sick. It's not only Vrindavan. Mm. Yeah, in, in the company, also devotees are getting sick and like this. It's the uh, winter. Yeah. Season. So Gurudev also says we cannot uh, escape from uh, this material circumstances. No. Sometimes we have to deal and make balance. Mm. He showed us a good example, but like this, you also, Uttabaji, also, all these devotees who come and uh, today just you read, uh, dedicated all of your heart, body, mind, senses to these sharings. 
I beg your mercy. It's, I only read. <laughs> but without, is... uh, without mercy, it cannot do it. And from your vibration, you save our life today again. And the good day must be happy. You are saver. Mm-hmm. I'm, this is mercy that, to read these books here. I always feel this, how much mercy is flowing by getting this. Yeah. And especially, yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially you mentioned the last point. When will I become qualified for her loving service as a maid servant with body, mind, and senses? Gurudev says here is underlined. This is the most <laughs> important in this verse. Underlined. Me. Underline, he said this. <laughs> because we are attracted to Radha. Oh, it's beautiful. It's not our goal, right? What is our real desire? It's still like, uh, let's say, more sub, sub more layer. We can go more deep, more taste. The Deva and Das Baba, you show the way. What is the most tasteful desire for our life? Thank you so much. Rati Rati Govinda Govinda